Hey, my name is Travis. Welcome to DevTips. This is our 4.3 in the series, Design and Code My Personal Website in 12 Hours. In the last video, I mentioned that you should download these files from GitHub, and I was about to create a repo and upload it myself, and I realized, I should be doing this with you guys. So that's what we're gonna do right now. So let's get into it. Today's video is all about setting up a repository on GitHub. So the first thing you wanna do is go and start a github.com account. Right here I'm in the DevTips account, but I actually wanna start this repo in the Travis Nielsen account. You can see that I'm a member of a few organizations, Work and DevTips, and I have my own personal stuff. So after you have your own github.com account, you want to go to mac.github.com to get the Macintosh app. And there's also a windows.github.com. But I'm on a Mac, so we're going to do this. Just click this big blue button here and download GitHub for Mac. It's going to take you through a few setup steps. They're really simple and easy, just like logging in with your account that you previously made. But we have that done here. Now, in the sidebar is a list of all the repositories that you have connected with your local uh, machine and the the server on github.com. But I don't have one, so what we want to do is start one right now with our newest code that we just got finished uh, setting up. So I'm going to click this plus button, and there's three options. I can create a new repository locally, I can clone one from uh, from the internet, and that's fun to do, and then finally I can add one. So this is to find some files that already exist locally and get them ready to be pushed up to github.com. So that's what I want to choose right now because I've already started on my code. So I'm going to go to choose and find the code that we've just been working on, on desktop design and code. That's my folder. Oh, I just read... You know what? Actually, I just realized something. Something kind of important. So there's this idea with Git that they just take everything that's in that folder and just push it up online. And that includes um, stuff that you probably don't want on in your your code repository. Things that are used in the system to create folders and like uh, invisible files and stuff like that. So right before I start um, pushing all this stuff into my repo, I want to show you something. So let me show you what I mean. I want to grab my project file and drag it down to my text editor. And when I look in the sidebar here, I can see invisible files that are not normally viewable in a regular finder. Things like ds.store. ds.store is a file that the operating system will use to kind of keep track of your folder structure. It's important for the operating system, but it's not important for my project. So I want to use a special file called .gitignore, and it's right here. Now in this file are just is basically a list of things that I want git to ignore when it pushes my project up to uh, up to the cloud on github.com. And it's been started right now, but I want to fill it out. And a great way to do that is go to gitignore.io. And this is great. You can just like write OSX. Um, we're using Jekyll. We're using Jade. No matches there. SAS. And you click generate. And it will, it will generate a text file that's just, you can just copy and paste that into your gitignore file. And it will add all the things that you don't want stored in your GitHub repo. For example, um, <clears throat> here's that DS store file, uh, these different things that for the OSX, and just stuff you don't really want. So SAS cache and SAS map. So these are all really good to have. I'm going to save that and exit out here. And now I'm going to go back into my GitHub application and add my project to the repository list here on the left. So I'm going to choose the folder from the desktop and open it. Create and add repository is the blue button here. And what this does is it creates a local repository on my machine. It's not up on github.com yet. And I can go through and, and take a look. Here's my hello file. Uh, here are my other files. Like here's that gulp file that we worked pretty hard on. And I see all these, it's the, all these lines are green and all these pluses. That means that these are all new lines. They have been added. This application will keep track of all the changes we make line by line. And now that we see that this is what we want, we want to check all of these uh, files here, make sure they're all selected. And for our summary, we're going to create a commit right now. So in the summary box, I'm going to write initial 
commit. And commit to master. Master is the branch that we're going to be using right now. And branches are mm, something we don't have to pay attention for for this project. But it's something we definitely will learn about later when we do a git series. So now that I have the commitment made, and it's right here, it's logged here as a commit, I want to send this commit up into the cloud. I want to send it to GitHub. And I'm going to do that with this publish button right here. So what we're going to do now is create this repository up on the cloud. We have a name for it and a description. A description is going to say um, the new version of my personal website. And the account, I, as I showed you before, I have a few different organizations that I belong to on GitHub. But this is going to be under my personal account, Travis Nielsen. And I'm going to push the repository straight up. So while that's being uploaded, now let's go to github.com and check out my account. I should have a new repository created called Design and Code. And it's just as easy as that. So if you wanted to check out the code, you have a few options. The first thing you can do is go to the repo at github.com slash Travis Nielsen slash design dash code and go over here to the sidebar on the right and click download zip and you just get the whole repository in its most current form downloaded to your downloads folder. An alternate way to do that is to clone the repo to your desktop using the button right here and what this will do is it will actually open the application that we just downloaded and set up everything and just start downloading it to uh, the place that you choose in that application. Another way you could do this is to fork the repo yourself and what that will do is this will create on github.com under your own account a, a copy of this repository and then from there you can clone it or download it and change it and those changes will be saved to your own account and not mine and that's a really great way if you want to create a version of this on your own and keep track of it there and one other feature that github has because it tracks all your changes you can actually go into this commit tab right here and we only have one commit so far but you can choose any commit that you want as they appear here and and choose that as a starting place for your download all right i hope that was helpful just a really quick video to get you guys all on track with me on github my name is travis this is dev tips keep on hacking this is the end of the video. This is the part where I talk about my patrons. These are the wonderful, generous people who make this video possible. Uh, as patrons, they enjoy special perks, like the DevTips Patron Podcast, or um, getting videos early, or extra bonus videos, things like that. If you are interested in being a patron, check out patreon.com slash devtips. And if you're still not convinced, here's something that somebody recently said about their membership in the DevTips patron community. Sounds fun, huh? Take a look, check it out, and take care. We'll see you next time.